Great, we want to welcome everybody today. My name is Nancy Target. I'm with the Howard County Library System. Um, Mystery Lovers Unite. We're pleased to be back this year virtually with the holidays right around the corner. This is the perfect time to learn about what's new in the mystery field from the members of the Chesapeake chapter of Sisters in Crime. Today, we're gonna to hear from 15 crime writers about their new books and short stories published this year. This webinar is, as I said, being recorded. We've also turned on closed captioning, which you can toggle on or off using your Zoom toolbar. The best way to view today's webinar is using the speaker view. Um, so please, uh, you can uh, control that yourself. Uh, we'll use the chat or the Q&A if you have questions. I'll be dropping in the chat the link to the handout um, for today, which is also attached to the event listing where it will live. So don't worry, you won't lose it. You don't need to print it. I'll also drop in the chat the link created especially for today's event to purchase some of the talked about titles. This webinar is in partnership with the Chesapeake chapter of Sisters in Crime and sponsored by Mystery Loves Company Booksellers. I want to warmly welcome Barb Goffman who helps organize this event with the Howard County Library System. She'll introduce herself, so get comfortable and Barb will get us started. Hi everybody. Um, I think from the list of attendees, I know almost all of you, but for those of you I don't know, I'm looking forward to getting to know you somehow, some way, maybe right now. So um, I'm a short story writer and I um, organize these events for the Chesapeake chapter every year. It's been about at least 15 years now. Um, we're delighted to be back with the Howard County Public Library System where we come almost every November, except for last year, stupid COVID. And maybe next year we'll be back in person. But for now, everybody can come. You don't have to come to Maryland. We're so happy that you're here. So here's how it's gonna work. If you downloaded the handout, um, you're going to see that we're going to be going person by person alphabetically, and they're going to be talking about what they had published this year. And feel free to write notes. You know, when uh, when Sherry Randall slash Mary Allen starts talking about her book and you think, oh, my God, that's perfect for my grandmother. You could just write grandma right next to the book and you'll know. So later you won't have to forget who was best for that book. I know who it is. So um, we're just going to go person by person and um, I will be posting occasionally on the link um, in the chat, the link for the bookstore in case you want to click over immediately and buy something because you just can't wait. So thank you also very much for coming and take it away, Mary Allen. Thank you, Barb and Nancy, for that very nice introduction. Um, mystery readers and grandmas, re yes, unite. Um, because I, I have heard that grandmas do like my book, and I'm very proud of that. I think grandmas are discerning readers. Um, anyways, I am Mary Allen. I'm the author of the new Ice Cream Shop Mystery Series. I'll show you the cover. The first book is called The Rocky Road to Ruin. Uh, my main character is Riley Rhodes. She's a 35-year-old librarian for the CIA, and she does take on the occasional undercover mission. But unfortunately for Riley, one of those missions goes very spectacularly wrong, and she needs to regroup. So she goes back to her hometown of Penniman, Connecticut, um, where she takes the job as a manager of the Utterly Delicious Ice Cream Shop. Uh, Penniman is one of those you know, dream villages that actually do exist in some parts of our, our world. Um, it's complete with a covered bridge and a town green and her dad's used book, bookstore, the Penniless Reader. Now, as soon as she gets back home though, she's not even home for 24 hours when she discovers a body in the barn behind the shop. So sleuthing ensues. Um, and I hope you'll check it out. The second book in the series is available for pre-order. I just wanna show you the cover cause it's so cute. It's called um, Mint Chocolate Murder. Um, and I love the green that they came up with. It looks so cute. Uh, one of the fun things about the culinary cozy that I do is that we have recipes. And I'll say that the recipe in the Rocky Road for Ruin, uh, Rocky Road to Ruin um, has, has a really killer recipe for a margarita sorbet. It's terrific, even when the weather gets cold. Um, now, some of you are saying, wait a minute, that's Mary Allen looks an awful lot like Sherry Randall. And yes, as Sherry, I have done a short story this year in a really fun anthology called Murder on the Beach. 
Um, so if you're craving some mystery and some warm vibes, maybe you can check it out. Books make great stocking stuffers. Um, and I hope you'll support your local bookstore. And thank you so much to the library and Nancy for hosting us today. And now take it away, Donna Andrews. Hi there. <clears throat> Ignore the coughs. I've got first cold I've had in almost two years. Ah, uh, I had two books and a short story come out this year. Uh, am I, you know, I'm, I'm still seeing Sherry, so whatever. Uh, I had two books and a short story come out this year. Uh, in the summer, I had Murder Most Foul, uh, which is, uh, in, in this book, Meg Langslow, my ongoing series character, uh, her husband is directing a production of Macbeth, and most of the cast and crew are either living in her house or camping in her backyard. And she has enough on her plate without having a dead body turn up. Uh, we also have, then my Christmas book this year is 12, 12 J's of Christmas, in which uh, Meg, is, Meg is organizing the usual family holiday celebrations. And the last thing she needs to do is to have a wildlife artist who's doing, doing some paintings for her grandfather, the naturalist uh, grandfather, has hired this horrible curmudgeonly artist to do his paintings and the guy has a lot of enemies and one of them knocks him off in Meg's library the way one it's uh kind of like a Cabot Cove syndrome problem here uh we try to ignore that Meg you know the the uh the murder rate in carefully Virginia is a lot higher than I would want to live in a town with uh in case you're if you're on a budget both the Falcon, the Falcon always wings twice, and the gift of the magpie. Last year's summer book and Christmas book are both out in paperback now. And I also had a short story this year in uh, uh, Josh Pactor's here in his uh, anthology, uh, the the monkey business anthology. That is the title of it, right? And I, unfortunately, I do not have my copy of it findable. But I have a short, and Josh will hold it up for us later. Uh, my story is the story that's based on A Night at the Opera. So I've had a busy year, and thank you. Take it away. Who's next? Whoever's next. And Barb is invisible, so I don't know who's next. Barb, you're muted. Yes, I realized, just realized that. I'm sorry. I was also writing a note to myself, Donna, to apologize to you because I forgot to list your... Your monkey business book on the handout. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, so, okay, hi. Um, I'm Barb Goffman, and I'm a short story writer. I've had a lot of success this year with, with my writing. Um, I took home the Agatha Award and the Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine Readers Award for my story, Dear Emily Etiquette. Thank you. Um, and I have had eight short stories published so far this year, and supposedly three more before the end of the year. Um, you can see covers of almost all of them on the handout. It's really hard to pick your favorites, but I am going to do it today because, um, sorry, I forgot to hit the timer. Um, I don't have a lot of time. So here we go. Um, if you like my funny stories, then I really hope you'll check out um, the anthology that Cherry Randall shared earlier, Murder on the Beach. Um, it has my story, A Tale of Two Sisters. Um, all the stories in this anthology are set on beaches throughout North America. Um, this one is set, mine is set at a large Jewish wedding at a, um, a resort on Lake Michigan in Wisconsin. Um, the main character, Robin, is the maid of honor, and knowing her big, big sister, Emma, can get anxious, very anxious, and that their mother is very overbearing. She has made it her job to make sure that everything goes smoothly during the event. But she doesn't count on thieves and a wedding crasher and more family drama than you can shake a limbo stick at. Readers have called it hilarious, and I hope it makes you laugh too. I think it's my best story of the year, so I really hope you'll check it out. Um, the next story I'm going to talk about is a family matter, which was in the January-February issue of Alfred Hitchcock's Mystery Magazine. Um, set in 1962 suburbia, uh, Doris and her neighbors are determined to move up the ladder of success, one rung at a time, together. 
Um, most men in town work at the pharmaceutical company and the wives spend their time making sure that everything is exemplary so that their husbands will be management material. And the future looks bright until Ginny, Bill, their three kids and their chickens move in next door. As Ginny does more and more things that violate the neighborhood social code, Doris makes it her business to try to help them conform. Until she learns that something is going on that is far beyond the social norms and she has to decide what she'll do to make things right. Um, I don't know if you'll be able, if you don't subscribe, I don't know if you'll be able to find a copy of the Alfred Hitchcock Mystery Magazine from last January. But this story is now on my website. So if you'd like to read it, I hope you'll check it out. How much time do I have? Okay. Um, another story I'm particularly proud of this year is Ice Ice Baby from the September, October 21 issue of Our Queen's Mystery Magazine. It's summertime and science teacher and single mom. Um, Melissa is driving an ice cream truck to help end, make ends meet. She needs to stay in her rental cottage in her school district because they provide necessary services for her son who has a labor learning disability. But her horrible married landlord has been her sexually harassing her and she has to find a sweet solution to her sticky situation. So you have to read the story to find out what she does. Hello, baby, sorry, the dog's visiting. Um, how much time? How much time? Okay, um, very quickly, if you like ghost stories, I have one that came out last month. Wishful Thinking is about four tweens who creep into a supposedly haunted house in search of supposedly stolen money, a million dollars. Um, they don't believe when they go in ghosts when they go inside, but maybe they should. Um, the story is available as a single story purchase from every ebook platform you can find. And then finally, um, in December, probably, my story Beauty and the Biatch will be published in the next issue of Sherlock Holmes Mystery Magazine. Um, high school senior Meryl befriends shy Joni, which enrages Meryl's best friend, Elaine. Elaine hates Joni. Um, they're all members of their school's theater club, and Elaine is afraid that Joni is going to try to steal what Elaine fe feels is her starring role in the play. Um, Meryl tries her best to play mediator until she's confronted with a situation that is far more beastly than she could have ever imagined. I have lots more stories that you could check out. Just go to my website, www.barbgoffman.com, and that's the timer. Thank you, everybody. Hi, I'm Judge Deborah H. Goldstein, and I appreciate being here with the other members of the Chessie chapter um, for this extravaganza being run by the Miller branch of the Howard Library with book sales sponsored by one of my favorite bookstores, Mystery Loves Company. Besides writing short stories, I write Kensington Sarah Blair series, which for those of you who love to cook is contrary to most cozy series. I write about a woman who finds being in the kitchen more frightening than murder. Um, Sarah was married at 18, divorced at 28, and all she got out of her marriage was Rara, the Siamese cat. By this year's Four Cuts Too Many, I'm not sure if you can see it there, um, the fourth book in the series, she is working as a law firm receptionist, pitching in as co-owner of her twin sister's restaurant and caring for Rara, as well as Fluffy, her rescue dog. She also sort of dates as she juggles her life. Although she wouldn't mind learning some knife skills from Grace, who also is the sous chef at their restaurant and is teaching knife skills as an adjunct professor or at the local community con college, Sarah finds herself up to her neck in clearing Grace's name when the culinary department's director is found dead with one of Grace's knives in his neck. In Four Cuts Too Many, Sarah soon finds there's no time to mince words when it comes to finding the real killer. If you're one of those who prefers to start at the beginning of the series and read the books in order, the first book, which was a Woman's World Book of the Week, is One Taste Too Many. In both of these books and the other two in the series are mass market paperbacks that can mean perfect stocking suppers or Hanukkah gifts. There's also recipes in all of my books for the woman who is afraid of cooking. Things like Jello in a can. I'll put up the link in a minute because that can only be downloaded. All the recipes from the four books have been put together by Kensington into a book called Simple Recipes from the Sometimes Sleuth. And if you can imagine what they're like. 
As I noted, I also write short stories, which often take a look at how people interact in special situations. My story, Biff's Place in Jukes and Tonks, brings you into one of the last original hunky tonks in the South, where good music and succulent ribs are colorblind. Contrasting people and ideas, the story reflects the coming of age of a young woman and the fine music and musicians that we all can identify with. Murder by the Glass contains cocktail mysteries written by many of the authors you're gonna see here today. My story, Bucket List Dreams, which is in the vein of many Agatha Award winners you have read, deals with those bucket list dreams we all have and what happens when fulfilling those dreams conflict with other people's bucket lists. My newest story, The Atonement Contract, came out a few days ago in the bold anthology. It takes place as Yom Kippur as a lawyer and God spar over the contract language um, of a contract which will determine whether a man will be inscribed in the book of life or the book of death. For a taste of these, plus my other available writings, as well as my partners in this extravaganza, please shop Mystery Loves Company and don't forget to support the Howard Library. Okay, hi, I'm next. Thanks, Deborah. I'm Sherry Harris. Well, first, I want to also thank Barb, the library, and Mystery Loves Company for putting this all together because we couldn't do it without any of them. Um, I'm Sherry Harris, and I write the Chloe Jackson Sea Glass Saloon Mysteries and also the Sarah Winston Garage Sales Mysteries. Um, I'm going to be talking today about A Time to Swill, which came out in July. Uh, one of the things I loved about writing this book was that it was based on, the beginning of it is based on a true story. A friend of mine that lives in the panhandle of Florida handed me a newspaper article about a ghost ship, which is really just an abandoned ship that washed up onto the shore of the beach near Destin, Florida, then it washed back out and washed back up further down the beach. And that really started all the what if questions for me. So I was thinking, what if Chloe Jackson was running out on the beach on a foggy morning and she sees a sailboat tilted at an odd angle out on one of the sandbars? Not only that, but she thinks she hears a baby cry. She quickly calls 911, but she can't let that baby be alone. So she boards the ship and it gets swept back out to sea. That's how the whole thing started in my head. So um, she gets on the ship and she realizes the baby was actually a kitten crying, but there's a skeleton on the boat and things kind of go downhill from there. She can't get hold of the Coast Guard. She finally gets a distress signal out, but the ship starts on fire and she has to abandon ship with the little kitten and jump into the sea where she's rescued by a good Samaritan. When she's back on land, Chloe finds out that the ship is actually connected to a 12 year old mystery where four people disappeared from Emerald Cove one night while they were out sailing. One of the people that disappeared is the wife of Chloe Jackson's good friend, Ralph Harrison. He had her declared dead several years ago and remarried his high school sweetheart. So when he becomes a murder suspect, Chloe's determined to investigate what really happened. She finds out that a lot of people in Emer Emerald Cove are, have secrets and she might have a few of her own. And I just have to show you, I just got the arts for the next book, Three Shots to the Wind, which comes out in March. Thanks for having me. Smita, take it away. Thanks, Sherry. Hey, everyone. I'm Smita Harish Chain, and I had nine short stories accepted this year, three of which are for 2021. The first story, Kohinoor, came out in the Mystery Writers of America anthology, When a Stranger Comes to Town which is a collection of stories about unsettling people and situations. My story is set in Mumbai, India against a backdrop of the dance bar scene and is about a dance bar girl who's trying to avenge her sister's death 
at the hands of the city's self-proclaimed morality police. The anthology has a lot of fantastic stories in it by people like S.A. Cosby, Lisa Unger, Alpha Burke, Michael Connolly, and others. And it's edited by Michael Carita. You're sure to find a bunch of stories in there that you like. My second story, The Fraud of Dionysus, is set in Napa Valley and has a lot of wine in it. It's the story of two cousins who want to make a killing in the cult wine market. Of course, there's killing and there's a double twist, but what most readers who read the story have said they've enjoyed is the glimpse behind the curtain of how wines are made and how wines are judged in competitions. The particular part of the industry that I looked at was cult wines, which sound evil, but really their name comes from the fact that they're a very exclusive wine, they're very expensive, and because they're made in limited quantities, you can imagine that can lead to greed and murder. So you can find that story in the July-August issue of Ellery Creed Mystery Magazine. And my final story that's supposed to come out this year is part of Malice Domestic 16's Mystery Most Diabolical, which is scheduled to release this month, but I don't have any more information about that. The story is titled Keeping Up with the Jameses, not the Joneses, but the Jameses. And it takes place at a wedding in a fictional village in India. I like calling it a fun romp with murder, which I guess for all of us is fun. The wedding is set in, it's based on an actual wedding that I attended in Goa, which was a lot of fun and there were armed militia there, but I don't think that anyone got murdered, but I'm not sure. I hope that you get to read all of these authors. Their works are fabulous and you're gonna have a whole nother crop of authors next month. So enjoy all of those and thank you so much for your time. And Libby Klein, you are up next. Hi, I'm Libby Klein. Thank you all so much for having me. Uh, everybody's uh, offerings are so fantastic. You are spoiled for choice for reading material for sure. I write the very funny Poppy McAllister mysteries. Poppy is a middle-aged plus-sized widow who returns to her hometown of Cape May to attend her high school reunion, and she has been stuck there ever since. She's helping her Aunt Jenny run a bed and breakfast, trying to wrangle her black smoke Persian into behaving, and dealing with constant guests to the bed and breakfast who create their own manner of chaos. Uh, this past year, Beauty Expos or Murder is my most recent book to release. The love triangle is finally over, but the complications have just begun. There are family complications and romance roadblocks, and it, it starts an entirely new romance tale for you to enjoy. Poppy has been asked to make paleo baked goods for the local health and beauty expo at Convention Hall. She finds that competition has set up a booth naming the Paleo Diva. And that's all she needs in a town that's already built on fried dough and sugar. There's also a local or a, a very prominent plastic surgeon who's come from New York named Dr. Lance Rubin. And he has found the ultimate anti-aging device and it's called murder. He is found dead under his revolutionary UV light mask, and it is one of the creepiest looking murder weapons I have ever seen in my life, and it was the very first thing that prompted the series, prompted this particular episode. Uh, on top of that, Amber, the local cop who has been making Poppy miserable, finds herself in hot water with internal affairs. And when you're dealing with cop on cop drama, you need someone outside the force to help you snoop around. So Poppy's going to find herself in the most bizarre circumstances, trying to help the woman who's been trying to put her in jail since she arrived. My series is a very fun and funny escape from all of the drama that we're going through in current events. It's a fun time away to just enjoy some, some new characters and some ridiculous situations. And it'll keep you nice and cozy warm throughout the cold days of winter. So hopefully you uh, are caught up on the series and this is the newest chance for you to check in and see what's going on in town. 
Thank you so much. And I, I don't actually know who's next. I only wrote down who was before me. Maybe Barb knows. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Debbie Mack, take it away. Thank you very much, Barb and uh, Libby. And um, hi, everyone. I want to thank uh, Barb, uh, Sisters in Crime, and the Howard County Public Library for doing this wonderful event. It's great that, that things like this are possible. I'm the author of two mystery series at this point, actually. I just started a new one. The Sam McRae Mysteries is my first series. The second one, uh, the uh, sequel to this book will be coming out in, um, in about a week, November 11th. It's called Fatal Connections. And it's the second book, as I said, in a new mystery series featuring female Marine veteran sleuth, Erica Jensen. In the first book, I established that Erica suffers from PTSD and an opioid addiction. So she's having trouble getting her private eye license because of legal problems in her past. And that's part of her slow recovery is to get over P PTSD and the opioids. And uh, she's doing a fairly good job of that, but she can't seem to stay out of trouble. In the latest book, she gets an early morning phone call from a client who basically begs her to come to the house. And she goes there and finds these clients, a married couple who are social media influencers, brutally murdered in their basement. And for reasons that pertain largely to her past with the military, as well as her medical history, as well as her legal problems, um, the police come to see her as a suspect. So she has to figure out what happens so that she doesn't get, arrest get arrested. <clears throat> and the story is set in Maryland. Uh, Erica lives in Wheaton. She gets around to all these different places around Maryland. I'd say it qualifies probably as a hard-boiled private eye type series. So feel free to write grandma next to uh, that title. Uh, she might love it for all you know, especially if she was in the military. Um, she's a strong female protagonist with big issues. And I try to give them the stories a sense of adventure and, and a certain amount of wisecracking fun amongst all the problems. <laughs> the book will be out as an ebook on November 11th. And I'm hoping to release the print version that, that day or so, soon afterward. Um, I also have a short story that didn't get into uh, the listing, unfortunately, because I didn't find out till recently that it's going to be out on November 22nd. Um, I have a short story in a compilation called The Big Bag of Dicks, which sounds a lot dirtier than it actually is. Um, Dicks is a popular, ham popular hamburger joint in the Northwest. And the plot of the story revolves around a Dicks bag. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, I am one of several authors who have contributed short stories that are like ancillary to that main A story to use some uh, TV parlance, A story versus B story. Mine is one of the B stories, one of the tangents. So it's called Sam McRae's Day Off, and it's going to be in a compilation called The Big Bag of Dicks, <laughs> something like that. Um, it'll be out November 22nd. Anyway, um, I'm really glad that you all uh, showed up to listen to us. And um, if, oh, if you, if you want to get even more authors to choose from, you can listen to my podcast, The Crime Cafe, where I interview crime suspense and thriller authors. The Crime Cafe, you can find it on my website, debbiemack.com. And with that, I'll just say, look for Fatal Connections on November 11th. And when you buy it in print, please buy it from Mystery Loves Company because they're awesome. They really are. They're an awesome bookstore. So thanks. That's it for me. And who's next? Is it Alan? Oh no, it's Sujata, of course. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, everybody. I'm Sujata Massey, and I'm happy to be with you today. And um, I wrote this book during the pandemic, and by golly, the pandemic was so long, it was published during the pandemic. So I remember thinking, oh, this will all be over by the time this book comes out. It came out this summer. Um, the Bombay Prince is the third um, mystery in the Purveen Mystery Series. And Praveen Mystery is her name, the name of my protagonist. She is Bombay's first woman lawyer. It's in 1920s India. And the thing that's um, 
special about this book is it's a mystery that takes place when um, the Prince of Wales um, is visiting, that's um, Prince Edward VIII, who later became king. Um, but in the 1920s, he was a handsome young bachelor and he visited India for about a four month period. And during his time staying there, there was a whole lot of mayhem and rioting um, because people in India didn't all want to continue as um, a royal colony. And so in the midst of all that happening, my heroine Praveen, whose family is divided on the issue, um, gets involved with the death of a promising young woman college student. And it looks to a lot of people like she was just um, a victim of rioting because there was rioting. Um, but Praveen realizes that there are a whole lot of other issues at foot that could be related to family, could be related to competition with um, male students at the school, um, could be some kind of a secret political plot. Um, so she gets involved in that. And so if you hadn't um, read Praveen before, the first two books in the series are in paperback. Um, they are The Widows of Malabar Hill, and the Satyapur Moonstone. And I'm so happy that um, Mystery Loves Company is the bookseller for our event. And this means that you're gonna get your books sent really quickly through the mail to your home. And um, we miss seeing, going to the Eastern Shore and seeing Kathy um, at her store, but this is a wonderful way to support an independent mystery bookstore. So thank you. Uh, I guess I'm next. So thank you to Barb for organizing and to Howard County Library for putting on the event. And thanks so much to Kathy at uh, Mystery Loves Company for being the bookseller. It's awesome. Uh, my name is Alan Orloff and I write both novels and short stories. And 2021 was a very busy year for me. My YA thriller, I Play One on TV came out from Down and Out Books this year. And I got the idea when my then agent sent me an email and it said, Alan, you know, my wife and I, we love watching crime reenactment shows on cable, cable TV, like Investigation Discovery. Wouldn't it be great if you had a teenage protagonist who portrayed a killer as a, as a teenager? Wouldn't it be great if somehow the uh, killer gets out of prison and hunts this guy down? And I thought that is a fabulous premise. Now, what my agent at the time did not know was that I had a teenage actor who in fact portrayed a teenage killer on a crime reenactment show on cable. So it was perfect for me. And the best thing was I don't have to do any research to, to, to write it because I lived it, except for the part where he comes down and chases uh, the actor down. So that, that came out. It was reviewed in the Sun Sentinel by Aline Cogdell. And she called, uh, I play one on TV, a rousing character-driven story. And uh, she said, adult readers will find much to like for its plotting strong friendships, and look at how a teen straddles adulthood while still a kid. I had uh, a number of short stories published this year as well, in keeping with the theatrical theme in Mystery uh, Weekly Magazine, which is now just called Mystery Magazine. I had a story called Auditions Can Be Murder. Uh, I had a flash fiction piece called The Shovel, and that's in Pulp, Pulp Modern Flash. And I'm gonna pop the um, website in the chat so you can go take a look, it's free. And the cool thing was they also did an audio version, which you can also listen to right on the website. So that was pretty cool to hear someone else read my words. Uh, in the um, May-June issue of Alfred Hitchcock Mystery Magazine, I had a story called Gator Palooza. I love alligators. Uh, in the Boucher Con anthology called This Time For Sure, my story is Killing Calhoun Again. And I also had a story in um, Murder by the Glass. My story was called A Taste of Murder. And in the uh, Malice Domestic anth anthology that's due out this month, uh, I have a 25 stanza limerick called There Once Was a Man Named LaRue. So that I decided I'm gonna do all my future writing in, in verse because it was so much fun to write. Not really. Uh, I also was, was fortunate enough to have a couple of um, uh, award things going on this past year. I Know Where You Sleep 
was a Seamus Award finalist for best first PI novel. It didn't win. And Rent Do was in Mickey Finn, and it did win. It won the Thriller Award for best short story. So that was pretty exciting. And let me just say that I'm also happy that I have a story coming out in our next, the chapters next anthology, The uh, Magic is Murder. Is that the title? Magic is Murder? I think so. And I got the title. I want to thank Marsha Talley in public for giving me the title Abracadaver, which is much better than my original title. Uh, so that's all I have. Thank, thanks again for everybody coming. Alan, can I interrupt? We have a question from the uh, audience. If you could hold up your books again. So I don't know where you want, I don't know which book, but I don't know where you want to start, but yep. This is I Play One on TV. This is the Mickey Finn Anthology. This is I Know Where You Sleep. Over by the glass. It's time for sure. It's the Val Patrick Anthology. Albert Hitchcock, Mr. Negri. And you, you can get both, I assume you can buy these from Kathy at Mystery Loves Company, if you're interested. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Alan and I are the two uh, Misters in Crime from the Chesty chapter of Sisters in Crime. And thanks to the organization, and as many have said to Barb and to the library and to Kathy at Mystery Loves Company, for supporting this uh, event this year in this unusual COVID-based format. Uh, like Barb, I'm primarily a short story writer. I had uh, 10 new short stories come out this year, two of them in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine, uh, two in Mystery Weekly, one in its rebranded uh, version, Mystery Magazine, and then five uh, out or coming out in various different anthologies. Uh, I, I'm not going to do any plot summaries. Um, in, in addition to the work that I do as a short story writer, I'm also a translator. I had two translations come out this year in EQMM, one of a story by a Flemish writer, one a Romanian writer. But what I really wanted to use this time um, to talk about today was hopefully uh, to help those of you who are doing some holiday shopping for short story readers. Uh, I uh, am also an anthologist. Um, I had some very, very good luck with an anthology I edited that came out last year in which Alan and Barb and Donna uh, all have stories, a book uh, inspired by the short fiction of Joni Mitchell. That one was a finalist for the Anthony Award and stories in the book uh, were finalists for the Thriller Award, the McCavity Award, and uh, a winner uh, of the Derringer Award for Best Short Story, tied for Best Short Story. Uh, but I have three um, 2021 anthologies out and one coming out between now and the end of the year. The first of the three that's out uh, is The Great Filling Station Holdup, crime fiction inspired by the songs of Jimmy Buffett that was published uh, by Down and Out Books. And then the uh, next two both were published by Untree Breeds. Each of them has a story by Barb in it, and uh, one of them has a story by Donna in it. Uh, Barb is in Only the Good Die Young, crime fiction inspired by the songs of Billy Joel, and both Barb and Donna are in <laughs> Monkey Business, crime fiction inspired by the films of the Mox Brothers. And those are all available uh, through the Mystery Loves Company link um, that should appear several times in the chat. The new book that's coming out next month is from Crippen and Landrew Publishers. It is a sequel to an anthology that I did a couple of years ago of short fiction by the late, great William Britton, stories that appeared in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. That first one was called The Man Who Read Mysteries. Uh, this second one coming out is The Man Who Solved Mysteries, the more short fiction by William Britton. It'll be out next month. We're working on the cover art now, but the rest of the book's already. Uh, and uh, I don't have a cover to show you, but um, that book, all the proceeds from that book are going uh, directly to the author, Bill Britton's widow, Jenny Britton, who's living in Buffalo, New York right now in, in sadly poor health. Uh, and then the uh, Jimmy Buffett and um, Billy Joel books, the authors have very, very uh, generously 
donated a third of the royalties for both of those books to uh, charities that are supported by, actually founded by uh, Jimmy Buffett and Billy Joel. March Brothers don't have a charity, so there's no charity donation there. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope that you will all have a very, very happy holiday season. I hope you'll buy a lot of books. And as has been mentioned previously, I certainly hope you'll buy as many of them as possible from Mystery Loves Company and your local independent bookseller. Uh, next up, we have Ginny Fight, better known as, or at least I should say, also known as Leanne Post. Ginny? Thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. This year, I had to go from soloist to a member of a chamber orchestra. This is my newest book, which somehow you can't see, but is behind me somewhere. Uh, Thoughts and Prayers is a collaborative novel written by four of us. I can't tell you what it's like to write with three other people, but you can imagine yourselves plus three other people and you'll know what we experience doing it. It's just fresh out from Sunbury Press at the end of October. It is the story of a straight A student, Lily Zhang, who is smothered by her parents and ignored by her classmates, who sneaks her manipulative boyfriend into Rockwell High, believing he'll get revenge for her humiliation at a debate club prep. And minutes later, 14 people are dead. Lily is plagued by guilt, but she doesn't want to be caught. And while everyone else grieves for what has happened, the class president, Keisha Washington, her longtime nemesis who narrowly escaped death, resolves to hunt down the culprit herself. As Lily dodges detection, she bonds with Sofia Hernandez, who lost her best friend, Caitlin Moran, in the shooting. And the adults around them Charmaine, Joe, and Mike also struggle to piece together their wrecked lives. When they come together in a support group, instead of finding solace, their mounting feelings of grief and anger drive them to protest and revenge. This book, early reviews have called it gripping, frightening, maddening, heart-wrenching. We think it's all that. We wept while we wrote it. We wept when we edited it and read it. We hope that you read it and weep, and then find the hope that we found at the end. I don't really have much more to say about it than that. I was surprised by the book itself. I never expected to write this book or to be part of it or to take on a subject like this, since it doesn't seem mysterious to me, but somehow the book is filled with twists and turns, and it will it will change you. That's really all I have to say about it. Colleen, you can take it away. Thank you. My name is Colleen Shogan, and I'm the author of the Washington Who Done It mystery series. And this past year, I had uh, another book published. Uh, it's called Dead as a Duck. And uh, it is uh, the seventh book, actually, in the Washington Who Done It mystery series. The uh, difference with this book than the previous books that I've written in this series is that this book, Dead as a Duck, is actually set not in Washington, D.C., like the rest of my books are, but this one is set in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. My protagonist, her name is Kit Marshall. And she's a congressional staffer. And the previous six books in the series have focused on Kit and her and solving mysteries on Capitol Hill. But I decided for this book in the series to move the location. Uh, and I really always had wanted to write a beach mystery. I'm a big fan of the beach. And so I decided that Kit and her friends would find their way down to the Outer Banks, to Duck, North Carolina, uh, because Kit's boss, uh, who is a, a member of the House of Representatives, is thinking about running for the Senate. And she decides to go on an exploratory uh, tour of North Carolina to talk to uh, voters and see if she should make a Senate run in the upcoming election. So Kit accompanies her down there to uh, Duck, North Carolina. And uh, after um, what happens is uh, um, Kit's boss is hosted by the mayor of the town. 
uh, to uh, to talk with voters and the, the town meeting erupts. Uh, it turns out the mayor is not very popular in the town of Duck, North Carolina. There's a lot of people that don't like uh, him. His name is Ronan Godfrey. And sure enough, later that day, uh, Ronan ends up dead uh, um, and ends up in the water of uh, the nearby Curatuck Sound next to uh, a wine bar that he owns in town. So Kit had thought she was going to go on vacation uh, in uh, the Outer Banks uh, after the town meeting, but instead she has to mobilize into action with her husband and her friends, who they rented a beach house there, uh, to clear her brother, who ends up being one of the suspects in the murder. So this was a really fun uh, mystery to write. I really like the idea that I could move it to a different setting. Like I said, I've always wanted to write a beach mystery. There's a lot of focus on, uh, you know, the things that you can do in the Outer Banks, like uh, the, uh, seeing the Corolla horses, uh, also go, uh, going kayaking on the sound. So it's a real true, uh, I, I really incorporate the geography of the Outer Banks into um, the, the book. Uh, I've spent a lot of time there. Uh, and in fact, a lot of this book was written while I was in the Outer Banks during COVID. Uh, so here's the book. And I just also wanted to mention the sixth book in the series, Larceny in the Library, this year um, did pretty well on the award circuit and it won a bronze medal uh, in the Independent uh, uh, Publishers Book Awards, the Ippies. So I was really happy um, about Larceny in the Library doing well in that competition. Uh, once again, I want to thank the Howard County Library, Mystery Loves Company, and also our organizers, uh, Barb Goffman, for putting this together. I think Heather is next. Hi, thanks, Colleen. I'm Heather Widener, and I write the Delaney Fitzgerald PI Mystery set in Central Virginia. And I have a new cozy series, the Jules Keen, oops, can't see it very well, the Jules Keen Glamping Mysteries. Jules Resort is set in the heart of the Virginia Blue Ridge Mountains near Charlottesville, and it's a quaint town of Fern Valley. It offers guests a unique vacation and refurbished vintage trailers. Jules and her father saved about 50 classic campers from the scrap heap, and they upcycled them with wine chillers and plush amenities and all kinds of techno gadgets for glamping, which is glamorous camping. And hoping to extend her offering, she partners with her maintenance security guy to create a, a village of tiny houses for her guests. So most days in Fern Valley are serene, but there is nothing like finding a dead body clad only in a red satin thong on your property to jolt you from your quiet routine. Jules is thrust into the world of the dark web and one of her guests, Ira Perkins, is found murdered in the woods near the vintage trailers by a pair of bird watchers. Jules quickly discovers that the man who claimed to be on a writing retreat was not what he seemed, and someone would go to any length to figure out what he left at her resort. She, along with her Jack Russell Terrier Bijou, has to put the rest of the missing pieces of the blackmailing scheme together before her business is ruined. Curiosity does get the best of her, and she steps up her sleuthing to find out what Ira Perkins was really up to and what he was hiding at her resort. I am fascinated with the glamping experiences and the tiny houses that these people create. These houses really are small. They're 400 to 1400 square feet and all the amenities and the storage are, de are designed with minimalism in mind. Jules themes each of the campers in the houses with special decor like the 1947 Robin Hood trailer that's decked out in the honor of its namesake. The 1959 Sunliner Caravan that sports a posh pink Barbie fashion design in honor of the year that the camper and the doll debuted. And the 1953 Redmond New Moon, which is decorated in honor of Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball's movie of the same year, The Long Long Trailer. The tiny houses all have book or author themes and fun amenities for their guests like a revolving bookcase or a reading nook. Book two in the series comes out next October, and that one is Film Crews and Rendezvous. And then the third book will be out the following fall, and it's called Christmas Lights and Cat Fights, the best way to celebrate the holidays. Uh, you can find me and my books on my website at heatherwidener.com or your favorite bookseller. And I'd like to echo what everybody else said. I'd like to thank the Chessie Chapter and Barb Goffman, the Howard Library staff, and Mystery Loves Company Bookstore for putting on such a fun event and for having so many amazing authors. So thank you. I think Kathy's up next. I am. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. 
Um, and thank you all of you. Uh, my name, as said, is Kathy Wiley. With that last name, I am used to being uh, I'm used to being last. Uh, I know some of you, like Christopher Zagorski, are familiar with that issue as well. Uh, but I've enjoyed being able to hear all of the authors that came before me and their stories and their novels. This year, I personally will have and will have uh, two short stories published. The first in May was a story in Murder and Speech, as, as others have said. Uh, my story, Frog Days of Summer, features Jackie Norwood, a former celebrity chef who has lost everything due to her alcoholism. Now recovering, she is rebuilding her career by judging food festivals. In this story, she's in Grenville Beach, Louisiana, on the Gulf of Mexico, and she is ju judging, yes, a frog legs festival. In this story, she's in Grenville Beach, Louisiana. Oh, sorry, I said that. Um, she's along with uh, Chef Henri Clement. Unfortunately, the second day of the festival, one of the competitors, a close friend, misplaces her favorite knife. So Jackie looks around and finds the knife embedded in Chef Henri. To defend her friend, she has to find the real killer. Murder on the Beach is the first anthology in the Destination Murder series. The second was just announced, um, and that will be Murder in the Mountains. That will be published February 1st, but is available now for pre-order. And in celebration of that announcement, Murder on the Beach is on sale on Amazon for 99 cents. Print copies are available at Mystery Loves Company and other online sellers. Um, my second story will be published in the Big Fang Anthology. Um, if you love animals, this anthology not only features animals in each story, but the profits will go to Harbor Humane Society in West Olive, Michigan. I think I might be the first people to show this, this cover because I just got it yesterday uh, along with the announcement that yes, it will be published by the end of the year. And don't tell my cat, but my story actually features a doggie. Um, Lauren Chase is desperate to find a way to use up her dog's enemy, energy. Tigger, a two-year-old copper husky, has more energy than three toddlers full of Halloween candy. So she discovers nose work, which is a competitive sport that uses the same skills that dogs use for bomb sniffing or drug finding, but in this case, dogs search for anise, clove, or birch. In my story, Follow Your Nose, Lauren and Tigger are trading with Tracy Warner. Tracy's a DEA agent, and she brings along Chester, her German shepherd, and Brianna, her teenage daughter, who is not happy to be there. Brianna resents everything, especially her mother, since her parents are going through a contentious divorce. When Brianna doesn't return from a walk, Chester and Tigger use their skills to try and find her. That is what I've done this year. Hopefully next year we'll find um, some full length novels featuring both Jackie and Lauren. Um, as many have said, thank you so much to the Howard County Library, S Sisters in Crime, Chessie Chapter, and Barb Goffman for organizing this and Kathy Herrick from Mystery Loves Company for selling our books. And thank you to all of you, the attendees for listening to all of us and hopefully finding lots of good ideas for gifts for other people and for yourself. Um, and that is it for me. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you, everybody, for coming, all our panelists, all our attendees. Thank you once again to the Howard County Public Library System and to Nancy, who has been my rock of a contact, who put all of this together behind the scenes. So I didn't have to worry about any of the technical stuff, which really, if you know me, is a good, good thing. Um, if you've enjoyed today's presentation, we will be back with completely different authors, 16 different authors on December 11th at the Reston Virginia Public Library System. Those, um, oh shoot, sorry. Um, registration for that event will not open for another week. I will be posting on Facebook and will be on the chapter website, um, information about how you can sign up for that. So we hope you'll all be there and thank you very much for attending. I want to thank everybody so much today for coming out, Barb and all the other authors who spoke about their new books and short stories being published this year. Congratulations, first of all, and thank you for sharing. We also want to thank the Chesapeake chapter of Sisters, and I'm gonna add in Misters in Crime, 
and Mystery Loves Company booksellers for sponsoring this event today. All the links will be included in a follow-up email. We're happy to uh, be able to add back a little time to your day on this beautiful Saturday. So go out and enjoy. I'm going to turn off their recording now. Thank you again and have a wonderful afternoon and a happy holiday season.